They finally did it. Resident Evil 4, the remake. Here we go. So a few months ago, I posted some Resident Evil 4 remake speculation and theory videos that some of them just came true. So let's address those real quick. Number one, Resident Evil 4 is a masterpiece. The only way one can remake it and do it justice is by doing something different. Check. Number two, a good way to make it different is to look at things that didn't work out so well. Things like improving the story, making an emphasis on a darker tone. Check. Number three, Resident Evil 4 having multiple camera perspectives. Some of the footage has Leon walking with the same animations from Resident Evil 2 Remake, so Over the Shoulders basically confirmed. We all knew that was gonna happen, but what we didn't know was if it could let you switch camera perspectives. Resident Evil 2 Remake perfected the Over the Shoulder. Resident Evil 7 and 8 perfected First Person. I tossed this idea into the video that perhaps the best thing the remake could do to stand out is to include multiple camera perspectives. Resident Evil 4 remakes confirmed to be compatible with the PSVR 2. I mean, if you think about it, every Resident Evil since 7 controls exactly the same despite the camera differences. The controls have been homogenized so much to a point where you can put both perspectives and it still works. So far we only know that first person is in VR, but if there is a VR, then I'm willing to bet that there's a strong likelihood that you can switch to first person perspective. There has never been a better time to put multiple perspectives into one game game. On the small chance that it doesn't have a first person perspective without the VR, there's still the VR version so I'm gonna mark that as check. There's only one theory left to prove or disprove, and that is whether Claire will be in the game. And the last one was about a countdown a few months ago, but there was no Resident Evil announcement and I was dead wrong. However, I did mention something that it turned out to be a huge factor, and that pertains to Resident Evil 4 Remake competing with the Dead Space Remake for the release date. And well, what do you know? Dead Space Remake is coming out in January, and that is usually when Resident Evil games come out. I mean, just look at these release dates, they're spaced out just enough not to mess with each other. So yeah, go check them out, or consider subscribing for my video essays. They're great, I think. I don't know, you be the judge of that. Anyway, on to the trailer. The first scene is a brand new scene that's never been in Resident Evil 4 and it's Leon Kennedy talking to President Graham. This could be one of two things, the introductory scene or a flashback. Let's take a deep dive and see what we can deduce from this scene. This is 99.9% .9 the introduction cutscene where President Graham tells Leon to save his daughter. It might look unnecessary, but it's actually really important. There's a common misconception that Leon Kennedy going in all alone in Spain is actually kind of stupid. It might seem like that, but there's actually kind of a reason for it. The agency suspected from the start that the abduction was an inside job. The only intel they have is that somebody who looks like Ashley was spotted in Spain. It's unreliable intel at best. It's not worth assembling a whole team and risking putting the mole in it. That would just make things worse. And that's probably what this cutscene's all about. This is where it comes in. This has to be some sort of cutscene where it explains the trust between Leon and the president. It has to make it plausible for the president to send this one guy and not suspect that he's the mole. I think we're finally getting that explanation. Now this could be an introductory scene or a flashback scene. This could be a flashback due to the light shafts being so blurred out in order to convey the sense of a dream. In the original, Leon passes out just after he gets off the boat from the lake. In the remake, judging from the trailer, it seems like he's just gonna pass out on the boat itself, and then triggering a flashback with Ashley's father. If you factor in the Plaga's infection and his guilt from the past and his anxiety not to fail this mission, this could actually replace the nightmare scene. I still think this is the introduction scene, but I'm not gonna rule out other possibilities. In the next shot, we get the first glimpse of Ashley Graham, the president's daughter. Now one thing we immediately see here is the same pattern repeating from Resident Evil 2 Remake, where they take beta content and cut content for the original game and actually put them in the remake. Things like the Elsa Walker outfit, Ada's trench coat, Mr. X's hat, and now Ashley's outfit, ditching the green skirt for long trousers and sporting a red jacket. She still wears a scarf though. Now what's interesting here is that Ashley's running through a path that leads to the village, the same path that Leon takes at the beginning of the game. The trailer hints a lot at Ashley being a far more important and far more playable character this time, and this shot in particular seems to be the same time of day when Leon arrives, which leads me to suspect one of two things. We're either gonna be swapping characters a lot during similar time frames, just like in Resident Evil 3 Remake, or, given that this is the same studio behind the Resident Evil 2 Remake, we could be getting an A and B scenario with Leon and Ashley. The next shot depicts a carcass lying on the floor next to a candle. Now looking at the candles, this, this probably isn't cannibalism, this is just a ritual offering, a sacrifice for the cult. They could be implanting the Plagas parasites into their bodies in the ritual and maybe that's what's causing them to die. This could probably be hinting at wildlife in the forest. I think the hunting mechanic from Resident Evil Village is probably making a return in this game. How cool would it be if some of the animals you had to hunt would be infected? The next picture we have Leon walking in the forest in the dark. Now in my original video I was actually talking about Resident Evil 4 having a darker tone, but actually being literally darker? Yes please. 
I really hope it's not just one linear set piece like in Resident Evil 8 where you just walk forward and nothing ever happens, but actually being able to freely wander around the forest in the nighttime, that's music to my ears. In the next shot we have Ashley looking at crows in the trees and she's got a lot more detail in her jacket. Now I don't have a clue where this location is, but I'm starting to think that this is the gate that leads to the boulder chase. Moving on to the next shot we have the iconic first villager house. Now this house is a little bit hard to recognize because the color palette has been changed. Resident Evil 4 Remake no longer uses the muddy brown filter of the original game. As you can quickly notice in the remake, a lot of the nighttime uses cool and bluish tones while sunrise and sunsets have a lot of vivid colors. However, you can still identify this as the first village house from the chimney and the porch. And also the next shot, which looks a lot like when Leon enters the first house in the original game. Now before we move to the next shot, I want to draw some attention to Leon's jacket. This jacket is not the same as the original. This jacket, just like Ashley's outfit, is from the beta content of Resident Evil 4. This jacket is way puffier and it's got even a collar that's filled with more fur. The next shot is a big one and that is the village. The fidelity is amazing here. These houses have so much more character without that brown filter. Objects like the bonfire and the rooftops really pop out in this picture. But then the rest of the scenery has a lot of cool tones that give it that muddy wet feeling. There's now even a lantern or a fire next to the door that leads to the church. Interesting. I think the next shot is the same door actually. The rooftop and the light source seem to be the same. And now it's even got some few skulls for decorations. What a lovely warm and welcoming village. Next up we have Leon looking at the village bonfire. Is he mourning a friend or a lost teammate or is he just admiring those super sweet sexy next gen graphics? Okay up next we have Luis wearing a jacket that seems to be made from the heavens. I wonder if Leon or Ashley will wear it eventually. I hope it's an unlockable. Now what's just as cool in this shot is the return of the Red 9 handgun. Now what's interesting is that Luis did not have a laser sight on his Red 9 but this game has it. I hope that confirms that all the weapons have laser sights in this game. I really wish that happens. The next shot is that of the interior of the first village house. This is wonderfully detailed. There's a mess everywhere, there's the fireplace and then there's the first ganado. Holy moly does he look unsettling. You can't see it in this picture but if you look at the trailer the way he wobbles around is nauseating and his eyes just float around so aimlessly it's so creepy. So taking a look at the next picture we see one of the Los Illuminados cult members praying at the altar. Judging from the benches one on the left one on the right there's a door on the right there's a podium on the left this is most likely the same church where Ashley was trapped in the original. Next up we got three more Los Illuminados cult members. These are basically the ganado zealots from the castle. Is this the castle? I'm not sure. I think this is still the church. Next up we've got a few more Ganado villagers and I really like the mist in this shot. But that's about it. Moving on to the next one, we have Ada Wong. First things first, finally, she's wearing a practical outfit. Even with the face half covered, I'm getting a sense that she's got the killer looks from Resident Evil 2 Remake and Resident Evil 4 mixed with the attire from Resident Evil 6. Also this room looks a lot like the original room where she met Leon in the castle. Well that's pretty neat. Next shot we have the boat. It's quite a minimalist picture but I found two or three items that stood out. First one we've already mentioned it at the start that Leon is passed out on the boat. This boat doesn't have any harpoons. So is he gonna have to shoot with his gun? Is he gonna have to just dodge? Is there even a boss fight at all? The third point of interest is the source of light. The scene looks like it takes place at night and that there's only one light source coming from the bottom right. Could it be a lighthouse? Who knows. On to the big cheese. Pitores Mendez. This guy is definitely becoming the stalker enemy. I mean just look at him. The height, the build, the frame. He looks exactly like Mr. X and Nemesis. He's even got a hat. There's really only one question about him. Is he gonna be an unpredictable free roaming stalker like Mr. X? Or is he gonna be this super linear and underwhelming stalker like Lady Dimitrescu and the Nemesis? We'll have to wait and see. The next shot is of Leon experiencing symptoms of the Plaga's infection. There's not much to see though, the details quite obfuscated but what I do love about this shot is just how moody and atmospheric it is. Once again instead of a brown filter we've got cool tones and extremely dark shadows. This is amazingly ominous. Onto a completely opposite picture, we get an extreme close up of Ashley. The graphical fidelity here is simply jaw dropping. Look at all the detail in those irises. Even the way the light hits the pupils is just mesmerizing. The eye color is actually different this time. It used to be light brown, now it's sort of an aqua green color. Now we get to the last picture of the Ganados. This one's quite reminiscent of Resident Evil Village. It kinda looks like when Ethan gets pinned down in the village and then gets saved by the bell. I'm beginning to wonder if this shot is actually hinting at a first person perspective. Next we get an exterior shot of the church. This looks a lot like the original. From the trees, the crows, the tombstones, even the wind compass at the top looks the same. 
Now the next one is super interesting. Upon first glance, this emblem looks just like the winged key from Resident Evil Village, and it's also got a trail of blood coming right down the center, transforming it into the Los Illuminados symbol. I think it's safe to say that Resident Evil 4 Remake is gonna share the same family archetype as Resident Evil 7 and Resident Evil 8. But the thing that sparks my curiosity is whose hand does the fourth one belong to? I think it's safe to say that Sadler is the blood trail, the mutual link that's connecting all four of them, and he's infected with the King Plagus. And then there's three other bosses who are infected with the Queen Plagus and working directly under his control. Those three are the Big Cheese, Salazar, and Krauser. So who's the fourth one? Maybe it's the Verdugo? I think there's a right hand joke in here somewhere. Anyway, speaking of jokes, next up we have Osmond Sadler. This is an interesting design choice. The aesthetic and design is exactly the same, but the staff looks a bit more Cthulhu-like. Don't you just love how Bloodborne was influenced by Resident Evil 4, but now every Resident Evil game is influenced by Bloodborne? <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? The last thing I want to draw attention to is this. This shot of Leon perfectly captures the essence of the original opening scene, and then he looks down at the photo of Ashley, which also seems to capture the essence of the original. But something about all of this seems pretty off, don't you think? Throughout the trailer, we've seen Ashley's face revealed time after time after time. But every time Leon is in the picture, his face is obscured. This is just a theory, but what if his face is covered because the Plagas makes his eyes glow? And with that, the Raven draws to a conclusion. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.